Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes back. We're gonna formalize the basic ideas of testing the difference of proportions right now. And as you can see, a lot of this is already laid out for you. I want to point out a couple of things here as we go. As always, have a chance, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for everybody who pushed us over 300. That was kind of cool. Hopefully we can continue to do that and see where we go. Um, in terms of your hypotheses for difference in proportions, the thing to remember here is that what we're doing is we're trying to get an idea of where things are going. So here, the hypothesis, the null hypothesis is always going to be that you get a difference of zero, okay? And which means that P1 and P2 are essentially the same. When I took statistics and some books actually do it this way, I have found since teaching statistics that it's easier for me and most of my students to understand what's going on if you're doing it, if you're doing the difference of proportions as opposed to comparing two proportions. But that's just me. In terms of your alternative hypothesis, you're going to generally pick one of these. Okay, we're laying out all three options here just so you can see what's going on. One of the null hypotheses would be that P1 minus P2 is bigger than zero, which means that the first proportion is actually bigger than the second proportion. Um, P1 minus P2 is less than zero, which, mean, or it, which means that P1 would have to be smaller than P2, which is how you get a negative result there. And then you could also do kind of a double-tailed one where you'd have P1 minus P2 is not equal to zero, and that obviously just means that those two proportions are not equal to each other, okay? The whole point here is that you need to define P1 minus P2 with a direction, okay? Are we saying that one's bigger? Are we saying the other one's bigger? Or are we saying it doesn't matter which direction it is, but that they're definitely not equal? Okay, now, random. Because of how we're doing this, and we're gonna to continue to play with this as we go, there are two different possibilities here, okay? So you can either have random samples, like we've been doing, and with proportions, you'll get a lot of that because you're you know, like doing surveys or you're you know, administering tests, that type of thing. So this is going to generalize to the population. Or what you could also do is that you could have random assignment, which is what the Mythbusters did. Okay, and what that does, instead of generalizing out to the population, that's going to show causation, if you remember from what we did months ago. Causation. Okay. Um. The 10% condition. This happens only when sampling without replacement. So it is possible, I break this lead more often than I could possibly imagine. So only when had sampling without replacement. And remember for that, N1 has to be less than or equal to one tenth of the population of N1. N sub two has to be less than or or excuse me, just less than, not less than or equal to, I misspoke, of N2, okay? So if you're not doing sampling, it doesn't matter. So like if you're doing random assignment, we don't need to worry about the 10% condition, which is kind of cool, all right? You do need to say that you checked and you don't need to check it as you'll see down below, but um, you don't have to worry about actually doing it. And then large counts, um, remember that's the same thing as usual. So number of success, um, successes and failures have to be bigger than 10. So n times 1 p1 has to be bigger than or equal to 10. n1 times 1 minus p1 has to be bigger than or equal to 10. n sub 2 p sub 2 has to be bigger than or equal to 10. And then n sub 2 1 minus p sub 2 has to be bigger than or equal to 10. Okay? Sorry, I froze there for a second. That's not good but that will kind of get you set up. Now the setup here is the following. We haven't formally written any of this stuff out yet. So what the first two steps down here are is to go through what the Mythbusters did and set it up. In fact, look, it's the exact same setup as what you see on the previous page, okay? And so you're going to go through and you're going to complete the first two steps of the significance test. And this is something that my classes are still getting used to having to do on quizzes and tests. So again, really, if you're a student of this, really go through and you need to formalize each one of these parts because by doing so, you're really showing the reader that you understand what's going on, okay? You're making sure that you're saying, this is what type of test I'm doing, this is why I can do that type of test, and here's what I did, 
Okay, so go ahead, hit pause, lay it out, and we'll see you in a minute. Hey, welcome back. So here we go, first two steps. First of all, what's your parameter? P1 minus P2 is the true difference in proportions of people who would yawn. Seed minus not having a seed, okay? Our statistic that we got from up here is that, again, remember 29% P, P1 hat minus P2 hat is four. And again, we're getting that from here. 10 divided by 34 is equal to 29, a proportion of 0.29. This one over here, I get four out of 16. And that is going to be 25%. I'm going to use pens from now on. Um, and then in terms of the other ones, hypothesis, the first null hypothesis that we're going to say is that P1 minus P2 is equal to zero. This means that yawning is not contagious. And then we're going to say P1 minus P2 is bigger than zero. Yawning is contagious because that's what we saw. The seed gave more than the non-seed. So yawning is contagious. And our significance level is 5%. Now, in terms of your plan, so that's all done with the state. <clears throat> so for planning, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a two-sample z-test for P1 minus P2. So difference of proportions. For this, you need to check your conditions. Is it random? We They used random assignment. The people came in, they said, sit over here, over here, over here. You know, they alternated them all up. 34 of them got the seed, 16 of them did not. 10% condition. We have no sampling here, okay? So we don't need to check this. Let me see. Do not need to check. And remember what we're doing up here, since we're using random assignment, that's going to lead us to say causation. And then for step three, large counts. Here is something that we're going to start to deal with. If I look at the large counts, the group that got the lawn seed, no problems. 29% of 34 is 11. 71% of 34 is 23. Both of those numbers are bigger than 10. 75% of 16 is 12. And that's bigger than or equal to 10. But 25% of 16 is 4. So we have a problem there. The question is, what do we do about it? And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. I know, right? Now we're going to talk about that over the next couple of days. Um, but it does bring a question of, is what we have here good enough? They obviously should have had at least a bigger group to make that thing safe, or safer to trust the results. But anyway, with that being said, hope you got all those questions right. Hope you have a good question. If you have any questions, obviously talk to your teacher. Comment down below. While you're down there, hit the like button. We thank you for everything that you're doing. Talk to you soon.